It's also the director of the Black Library, the Black Research and Topographical Center on Crenshaw, uh, Dr. Rossadine. Thank you, Brother M. Samaji. Hmm. Brothers and sisters, we who are in Islam always begin with God. So in the name of Allah, forever give thanks and praise for raising up in our midst the black man and black woman of America, a divine leader, a divine teacher, and a divine guide the person of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And we forever thank Allah and his messenger for preparing one for this very critical and crucial hour in which we, the black nation, have now arrived as we face the challenge of the 80s. That one, Minister Louis Farrakhan, in their names I greet you, my beloved and beautiful black brothers and sisters a term that many of us have gotten a little afraid and ashamed to use, my beloved and beautiful black brothers and sisters with the greeting words of peace. Assalamu alaikum. I think the ABCI or the Association of Black Psychologists has done a very magnificent job and made a very interesting step to take a look at the theme the survival of the black community from a psychological perspective. For this, I am sure, is a problem and an issue that confronts us all. As we stand on the threshold of the 80s, we are very concerned about those things that the late 70s have shown us and promised us that we will have to face in the 80s. Before we could properly begin, I think it would be necessary for us to define our terms. If we say survival, studying the origin or the etymological root coming up out of French in particular, survivre, meaning to live on, whether the black community, the black nation will live on will continue whether there is perpetuity in our stride. That is our concern. Community. When we look at the term community before covering black, we'll hold that. At the very base or the root of the term community is the term commune, coming up out of the African system of collectivism, communalism, where there is loving, caring, and share. We must be very honest with ourselves that we actually do not live in community because the areas where we live in those areas, there is very little loving, there is very little caring, there is very little or no sharing, and certainly there is no collective spirit and there is no communalistic effort and no communalistic spirit, so we rob ourselves and we fool ourselves to call it a community, and we don't take the steps to remove the factors that could ultimately make it a community. Black, Dr. Maulana Ron Karinga defines black for us as color, culture, and consciousness. The representative of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad Minister Louis Farrakhan teaches us that black is synonymous to original. That the God, self-created, made it a divine, universal, and cosmic law that everything that would come into its origin would come out of black. Everything that exists that is coming into the light of the sun must have its origin in black. So we've got to get back to black. When we get back to black, we get back to the origin, not only of the universe, but back to the origin of our sin. Black means origin. Black means color. Black means culture. And black means consciousness. We must have a 
certain level of consciousness if we are to properly ascertain what our survival will be like in the Hades. Breaking down to the etymological root, the term consciousness, conceal with knowledge. We must again be honest with ourselves that we are without knowledge. And being without knowledge, it makes our future quite bleak makes it look quite uncertain. My specific theme, under the broader theme of the conference, is survival, a checkup from the NECA. And that's exactly what the black man and black woman needs as we cross the threshold going into the 80s. We need a checkup from the NECA. The black psychologist needs a psychologist. The black sociologist needs to see a sociologist. The black doctor is sick and needs a doctor. The black historian needs to be taught history. The black educator needs to be educated. Now I know there are those here of great substance and you fit in one or several of those categories. But if we are to look at this critically and if we are to face the crucial issues and ultimately come to a correct decision, we must face the reality of our present condition. We are without knowledge rather than with knowledge. And as we face the 80s, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad has well taught us that of all our studies, history is best qualified and most attractive to reward our research. If we know what happened yesterday, then we can intelligently discuss the problems that we face today because today is built on yesterday and tomorrow is built on today. If we know what went down yesterday, then we are not likely to let that go down as we cross the threshold moving into the 80s. What do we face? Before we can go to solutions, any doctor, any hospital, any clinic, must first of all properly diagnose the case. What are we faced with? Dr. Maulana Ron Karinga says that we are faced with the overriding problem of not having a value system. No concrete philosophy and system of values that cause us to call on our traditional greatness where we once were a free, proud, and productive people. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad has held for 44 years and his representative throughout the country from coast to coast, Minister Farrakhan says that the black man and the black woman faced the problem of being 30 to 50 million amnesia victims. 30 to 50 million amnesia victims. And this is certainly the proper place to talk about having amnesia at this conference. How are we amnesia victims? What name are you wearing on your tag when you say hello? My name is. Whose name do you really have? Do you have your name? Hello? My name is Joe. Hello? My name is Johnson, Culpepper, O'Reilly, Underwood, Overbrook. Hello? My name is Orangeburg and Greenleaf and Dangerfield. Hello? The name tag. My name is Mr. Black. And some of us are blacker than the ace of spade. And somewhere in the conference are conferences across the country where black people are convening. The name tag says, hello, my name is Mr. White. Hello, my name is Mrs. White. 30 to 50 million amnesia victims. 30 to 50 million people that wear somebody else's name and just as proud as they can be to wear somebody else's name and have the nerve to say, how can we survive in the 80s? If the black man and the black woman is to survive, Minister Farrakhan says that we must have a thorough knowledge of ourselves. Right. And a thorough knowledge of ourselves is relative to everything else. If you fall and bump your little head and go into a state of amnesia, and you can't remember who you are, we can bring anybody before you. And you can't properly relate because your frame of reference
which your primary base and frame of reference is self. So, we can bring mother in front of you. If you don't know self, you can't relate to mother. We can bring father in front of you, a loved one in front of you. You may jump up to attack the loved one because you have no proper base or knowledge of self. Bring a lifetime enemy of yours in front of you. You may jump up and smack the enemy on the cheek and throw your arms around the enemy and hug the enemy because you have not the knowledge of yourself. We may bring a very nutritious and wholesome drink before you juice or the life of the natural nature. You may push it down or slap it from the hand of the one who is bringing it. We may bring you a drink with the skull and the crossbones that is poison to the very last drop. And you may attempt to take it and drink it because your frame of reference is yourself. And because you have no frame of reference after the bump on the head, as you lie there in bed, you will take your friend for your enemy and your enemy for your friend. That which is good for you, you will shun it. And that which is bad for you, you will welcome it. The black man and black woman in this country represents 30 to 50 million amnesia victims that needs a checker from the neck up. You've got to have this examination if you're going to make it through the age. That examination is foremost, is very important. What language are we communicating in? And how well do we speak the king's English? Or we fix our big, pretty, fat, black lips and push them all to the sword. <laughs> I mean, we can really do it. We can just get through talking to each other in the coldest language. And the phone rings and we hear a white voice on the other end. Hello, how are you? <laughs> we can just get through tussling with each other, talking in the regular vernacular of our common family setting. And as soon as we leave the parking lot and face the white sales lady or the white salesman in the store, she says, may I help you? So she will certainly not want for you to get for me. We go into our special voice. Speak the king's English better than the king. Some of us teach the king's children English in the school system and correct the king when he makes a grammatical error in his own language. 30 to 50 million amnesia victims that need a checkup from the neck up. Speak his language fluently. Some of us can speak French. Some of us can speak German. Some of us can speak Chinese, and would you believe Vietnamese? But ask us the name of our mother tongue. Not only can't we speak one word of our mother tongue, but we can't even tell you the name of our mother tongue. After 400 years of oppression, slavery, suffering, and death, and a thorough brainwashing process by our 400 year old open enemy. We have become amnesia victims that can not only utter the language, but cannot even articulate the name of the language. If that is not an amnesia victim who needs a checkup from the neck up, I don't know what it is. Name gone, language gone. And I know I'm gonna step on a few toes when I move to the next category, but if your seat gets a little hot for you, just Raise up and fan it a little bit and sit back down, but don't go anywhere. Religion gone. Only people in the world that worship a God that looks like our enemy. Blonde hair, blue eyes, and pale skin. Does this mean that we don't believe in God when we attack the image? No. Black people have traditionally been a spiritual people, not because we relate to religion, not because black people reflect on God, but because black people naturally reflect God. Right. Maybe you missed that. Not because black people reflect on God, but because black people by nature reflect God. You are the very people of God's family. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad says you are from the Creator's nation that you and the God are one, 
that every element that is in the universe is in the black man and his woman. The power and force, the prime moving power and force behind the universe works and emanates from your brain cells and from the very core and every fiber of your being. You don't have to look for God. You don't have to search for God. Minister Farrakhan says you are the very people from the God family and God has forgot himself. 30 to 50 million amnesia victims who need a checkup from the neck up. Blonde hair, blue eyes, and pale skin. The same man that we worship as God, he looks like the man who shot us on 115th and Central in Watts just a few nights ago. The same man that we worship as God, the image looks like the turnkey at the jail or the prison. The same image that we worship as God looks like those who control the criminal policing agencies of this country that shoot black men, women, and children down in cold blood all across this country. According to recent police statistics at the Deadly Force Workshop of the National Association of Black Policemen, more black men, women, and children have been shot down at the hands of white police agencies in the past few years than were lynched at the turn of the century. They lynch us now in blue uniforms. They pay them to lynch them. They get a salary for legal lynching. The God that we worship, the image of that God, looks like the people who shoot us down and kill us all across this country. The Indian's God looks like the Indian. The Chinese's God looks like the Chinese. And as I heard the brothers say this morning in the hypnosis workshop, even if you want to criticize many sections of Africa and African culture, even if you say we take the God and make it into a stone or a rock, it's a black-looking stone, and the nose looks like our nose, the lips look like our lips. Sitting out in the center of the earth, 196,940,000 square miles of a vast expanse, sits in the center of the earth, the sphinx, with the head of a man and the body of a lion, in order to destroy the physical features, the nose was blown off. And the face has been greatly marred because there was left in the desert a sign by the black man that though he is the ancient of days and would be swept out of power for a period of time, he left a great monument in the desert saying, one day, I'll be back again. Look at her. All praise God. 30 to 50 million amnesia victims that need a checkup from the neck up. The psychologist needs to see a psychologist. The doctor is sick and needs a doctor. I mean, it's cold, but it's real. A God that looks like our enemy. Name gone, language gone, religion gone, God gone, culture and tradition gone. 30 to 50 million amnesia victims that don't know how they used to live. The folk ways, the mores, the norms, the lifestyle, the behavior, and the mental development of that people is styled and fashioned after their enemy. Right. Styled and fashioned after a dominant system that they have become dependent on. Look at it. If you feed from a poison polluted system, then you poison and pollute your own system. Is that not true? Yes, sir. The mother who shoots drugs and the drugs run through her veins. Is there not a great possibility and a great possibility that the new life that she brings in the world, if she is addict and the drugs run through her veins, is there not a great possibility that that new life that feeds from her system will also turn out to be an addict? How did you get in this condition, black man and black woman? Feeding from a polluted system. Feeding from a system that is diabolical, decadent, and corrupt. For people who are scientists of madness, who are wickedly wise, and who are planning carefully to destroy us in the time of our 
rise. We need a checkup from the neck up. We've got to evaluate this and see it from the context of reality, not as we would like for it to be, but as it really is. And then we can remove the factors that impede and block us from not having to ask the question of uncertainty about our survival for the 80s. But we can remove those factors and have clear vision as to where we are headed. Name gone, language gone, religion gone, God gone, culture gone. Everything that we do patterned after our enemy. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad's representative, Minister Farrakhan, says, he who prescribes the diameter of your knowledge or learning, he who prescribes the diameter of your knowledge or learning, controls the circumference of your activity. When your enemy is your teacher, and our enemy is definitely our teacher, many of us study his sociology, a sick sociology that hasn't been able to solve the white man's problem. So certainly it couldn't solve our problem, but we are feeding from a weak, sick, polluted sociological system of the white man's decadent, dying, falling world. His sociology has not been able to cure the sickness of his own world, but you go and try to get a degree in a sick sociology that hasn't been able to help him. A psychology perspective that he has used around the world and has not been able to figure out the terrible, again, decadent and corrupt behavioral and mental patterns that are inherently locked in to his very poison and polluted system. But you feed from that kind of psychology and you believe that that kind of sick psychology can bring up once free, proud, and productive people back to heights of eminence and power and place them again at the pinnacle of civilization. How foolish we are as a people. You need a checkup from the neck up. This is a terrible condition for people to be in. Don't know who they are. And when you don't know who you are, certainly you don't know where you are. The first thing you ask when your eyes open is, where? You're in hell. And many of you think you're in hell. You're in hell. And many of you believe that this is a hell that is a part of you when it is only a diabolical system that is diametrically opposed to the very nature of the core of your being that the Creator instilled within you. This system is opposed to you, but you think it's heaven and you are a part of it. You think that you helped develop it. You say, I helped build it. I'm an American. I even heard a brother or a sister the other day she said to me, she said, you know, I, I think we ought to get some of the Iranians and hold them hostage. I said, well, I'm not lying to you. I said, why, sister? She said, because they're holding the Americans. They're holding, they holding our people over there. So we ought to hold some of them over here, and then that would make them let us go. I said, us? <laughs> holding Americans? Of over 400,000, a recent study showed that just of over 400,000 of those who were in penal institutions and jails across this country, that 300,000 of the 400,000 that were surveyed, that the majority, 300,000 of that 400,000 are black and brown people. And you concerned about 60 or so peck of woods that's being held over in Iran? Right. Now, what kind of sense is that man? How did he get here? I was invited because you need a checker. On the neck up. That's why I was invited. You know, when you hear doctor, you expect, well, I'm really happy to be here today. Well, I am happy to be here today. Because I can't go nowhere without you, and you ain't going nowhere without me. And until we have the examination and the checkup, we're not going to be prepared to face the 80s, and survival will be out of the question because what this man has planned for you and me in the 80s, all of you who don't believe today, 
I guarantee you that all the conferences, all the workshops, all the lectures of Dr. Karenga, Minister Farrakhan, Stokely, and others across the country, Queen Mother Moore, won't make a damn bit of difference. What he is going to do in the 80s will make you unite. What he is going to do in the 80s, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, you're going to see a naked beast show himself in the streets. The political system of America is swiftly moving toward the right. A rise in the Ku Klux Klan, a Nazi fascist mentality. That Supreme Court Justice Thurgood Marshall in his recent address at Howard University, the theme of his lecture was for black people to watch out for the traps that white folks are set. He said the Klan no longer wears white sheets because they have to pay for the white sheets themselves. So now they wear uniforms that are paid for by the city. Uniforms paid for by the state. Uniforms paid for by the federal government. Supreme Court Justice Thurgood Marshall went on to say, and we are certain why he said it, because those who had smoked a cigar with him and slapped him on the back and how are you? And the antics of the decadence and the antics of the pollution of the political system of the white man, those who had slapped him on the back and smoked the cigar in the smoke-filled rooms with him. Baki came around, they took to the right of the podium. And he had to come to the reality of those that he had been with all that time. So then he would come out and begin to make such bold and strong statements. Arise in the Klan. Recent Life magazine article said that the Klan is organizing white over 100,000 white youth across this country. Not for Boy Scout and Cub Scout and Girl Scout and Brownie troops. Organizing them for what they said is war and revolution. Another recent report pointed out that the American Nazi Party is also on the rise. Playboy magazine did an interview of some of the Klan representatives, Nazi representatives, uh, American White Citizens Council, and others who have formed a coalition called the Paramilitary Right. The symbol of the Paramilitary Right is the Statue of Liberty with a red, white, and blue rattlesnake wrapped around its neck. And I lift the quote from their particular interview. It says, we are really entering a fantastically exciting age, an age of race war an age where the color of your skin will be your uniform. Hitler had the Jews, we've got the niggers. We've, we've got the Jews, but the primary question is the nigger question, and that's what we must be preoccupied with. Say, so we'll build bigger and better gas chambers, and this time there won't be any refugees. While we'll have a rope hanging over every lamppost for every nigger in America, Jesus, I'd hate to be in the nigger's shoes. All across this country, caches of weapons, caches of arms are found. All across this country, those who are strong and those who are our very powerful politicians who are attempting to deal with this decadent system are being faced with open racism, where they're saying, don't bring up that affirmative action mess of over 522,000 totally elected public officials in this country, less than three-tenths of one percent of the black, of that 522,000 is black in major decision-making positions. While we held more positions during Reconstruction, it would appear. How many United States senators do we have now? What happened to Ed Brooke? You say it was a family problem, I say you don't know where you are, you are an amnesia victim, and you've now beginning, you're beginning to awaken, but you don't know where you are, and you don't know the practices in this house where you find yourself. What happened to Merv Diamond? We have a Herald Examiner story on the wall at the Black Research and Topographical Center. A cartoon in the editorial section that shows Brother Merv Diamond is standing in line with some little white kids with a white Santa Claus sitting up at his seat and a half-naked white woman Santa Claus receptionist standing there and she says in Herald Examiner, that clown is back asking for the Lieutenant Governor job. Hmm. I mean, this is in the Herald Examiner. That's right. You say, oh, but they didn't mean it the way you think. You are 30 to 50 million amnesia victims. You don't know who you are. 
don't know where you are, and you need a checkup from the neck up. They meant exactly what they said. A move all across this country as was made in Nazi Germany when they were gathering their forces against the Jews. A move is now being made in this country point for point, parallel for parallel to exterminate you and get rid of you. And I can document everything. The University of Chicago meeting when some of the top population experts and scientists of this country met, white folks, called Blacks Recycled or Removed. They went on to say that white America, as the black man increasingly becomes unproductive in America, as he increasingly becomes more and more one who is not needed more uh, a liability than an asset, that white America may no longer be content with just discriminating against him and, as she did in the past, but her ultimate goal may be to kill him. The theme was, why discriminate when one can eliminate? You need a checker from the neck. You need to know who you are and where you are so that you can properly chart the course for moving into the 80s because the 70s were only a sign of what this man has planned for us in the 80s. And it will certainly bring us together and the natural course of events will force us into a posture of unity that we heretofore have only talked about but have not made any serious strides to. If the black man and woman is to properly prepare for the aid, then our whole thinking process and system must be reordered. You cannot go toward freedom and independence if you think the thoughts of your enemy. Right. If an enemy is your teacher, <coughs> that enemy teaches you his way. He puts his way in you, and then you become an enemy to yourself. If we look at the African continent, we can see our brothers and sisters standing up to shake off the yoke and the chains of colonialism as fast as they run the white colonial power out because the new leader that emerges to sit on the throne was trained at Harvard, trained at Oxford, trained in America, trained by his enemy. He becomes a black oppressor in that same land in some instances on the African continent. Why is that the case? Why is it that some of our politicians, why is it that some of our preachers, why is it that some of us who get in influential positions over major organizations that affect and influence the lives of black people start to move like the enemy? It is because the enemy's way is in us. It is because the enemy's teaching is in us. It is because the enemy's mind is in us and you need a checkup from the neck up. When the enemy puts himself in you, his way in you, when he does that, you become automatically an enemy to yourself. So the physical white man, the physical enemy doesn't have to be around anymore. What the enemy would invariably do to you, you then begin to invariably do to self. So the enemy doesn't have to be physically present anymore. He has put his thinking in the black man and black woman and you have become an amnesia victim 30 to 50 million who don't know who you are with the white man's name with the white man's language with the white man's religion with the white man's god with the white man's folk ways mores norms traditions and culture and you expect to survive in the 80s the only way you can do that is your thinking must be reordered the psychology that you move into the 80s with must be a new psychology. The sociology that you move into the 80s with must not be a sick sociology that has not been able to solve the white man's problems. The political science that you move into the 80s with cannot be the political science that has gotten the white man in trouble all over the world. How are you going to use a political science that's gotten the white man in trouble all over the world? <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> That political science is a political science that could only get us in the same position and put us in the same condition. 
I say to you again, brothers and sisters, that we need a checker from the neck. There's a lot of talk about third world relationships, hooking up with the Jews, and recently, hooking up with the Arabs. Now, I don't want to rub anybody the wrong way, and I understand that you even had a workshop to address that. Absolutely nothing in the world wrong with the black man and woman developing an international perspective. Nothing wrong with that. We must broaden our horizons. But if you're 30 to 50 million amnesia victims that don't even know who you are, and you leave New York City and on your ticket is Jesse Jackson. We don't know, if we didn't know who you were, we wouldn't know if you're the black Jesse or the white Jesse. We don't know, you've got the slave master's name on your ticket. Not only the slave master's name, but you're going with the slave master's slave mentality. Why do you say that, Rashidine? I say that before we move into the international arena, we must close the door and strengthen ourselves. Before we move into the international arena, we must close the door and reorder our thinking. We must close the door and get the kind of organizational structure, program, value system that is necessary that will give us leverage when we move in the international arena. You can't get out of the bed with the Jews, begging the Jews to finance your organization, and before you even take a shower, run and jump in the bed with the Arab. That doesn't make any sense. It's madness. And then what sense does it make to run all the way 10,000 miles from home, from meaning your own people? 10,000 miles from your own people talking about a homeland for somebody else when you left a place that you couldn't even call home. You don't even have a home, but you want somebody else to have a home name. That's ridiculous. That's an amnesia victim. That's someone who needs a checkup from the neck up. Why even deal with the individual? I'm not dealing with the individual, Jesse. I am dealing with the act that was made and the fact that many of our people identify with that act and because you're in a state of flux and confusion because of the COINTEL program's destruction of black leadership and the black movement in the 70s, you don't know which way to go. So any dynamics, any charisma, any tall, afro-wearing, broad chest, smiling one that has a command and a jingle jangle, rhythm rhyme approach to his speaking can get you to go anywhere that they want you to go. Curly hair Jim could get you to go all the way to Guyana. So I know someone could get you to move locally. Reverend Lowry is talking about a march on Washington, D.C. Talking about pulling together the masses of black people to march on Washington, D.C. That's an amnesia victim. That's one who needs a checkup from the neck up. These streets are too damn dangerous for you to be talking about marching. Right. Marching in these little towns, and you catching him. You can't go out marching and confronting an enemy until you have closed the door and closed rank. And when you come out to present yourself before that enemy, whatever your agenda is, you better have it together. But just to get a few people who are in flux and confusion together on an emotional note and put them all out in the street so you can get your picture in jet and tie and newsweek, it's foolish. The Klan is killing us. The Nazis are killing our people, not just the avowed ones, but those who are in legal positions across this country. Don't take the black woman and the foolish of our people who have not properly evaluated this problem uh, back out on the streets again. In those foolish protest marches, many of our sisters' breasts were bitten off by the vicious dogs that the police sicked on them in the midst of those marches. Now you want to commit our people to the streets again in a march on a show or a note of emotionalism and another leader telling them about alliances with the Arabs oh. over land that doesn't belong to the so-called Jew nor the Arab. The land doesn't belong to either one of them. If you read Sheikh Anta Dia, Dr. Chancellor Williams, The Destruction of Black Civilization, Dr. Walter Rodney, how Europe underdeveloped Africa. If you read Dr. Yusuf Benjur Khan, black man of the now, 
read the Honorable Elijah Muhammad message to the black man, you will find that that entire area that is called the Middle East today is incorrectly called the Middle East. It is actually Northeast Africa. You say, oh, no, brother. It was just a few days ago that the white man admitted that Egypt was in Africa. Just admitted that Egypt was in Africa a few days ago. Now you, because he calls it Israel, you call it Israel. I've been to Israel two times, not as guest of the Knesset or Menachem Begin, but guest of the original black Hebrew Israelite nation under the leadership of Rabbi Ben Ami. Stayed with them, walked the land with them, surveyed, fact finding that area that is called Saudi Arabia today. Saudi comes from an Arabic root, Aswad, which means black Arabia, black Arabia. That entire peninsula was black at one time, but we were driven from the centers of power. Menachem Begin is not the original Egyptian. Anwar Sadat, I'm not the, oh, Menachem Begin is not the original Jew. Anwar Sadat is not the original Egyptian. Muammar Gaddafi is not the original Libyan. Is the other group coming in now? Are they coming in now? My goodness gracious. We haven't even finished the examination. <laughs> well, we've got to. If, if they have to come in, we check on the for us and see where we are. Oh, I see. All right. Just cutting that short. Cutting that short. The land that some of our leaders have gone to ask for or to settle a dispute over doesn't belong to either of the people that they are negotiating for. Part of us on the side of the Jews, the other part of us are angry with the ones who are on the side uh, with the Jews, we're with the Arabs. And the land belongs neither to the Jews nor to the Arabs, and it's foolish to ask for a homeland for them when you have no home and no land of your own <laughs> here in America or anywhere else, no land that you can call your own. That's 30 to 50 million people who are amnesia victims who certainly must have a checkup from the neck of What we face in the 80s, brothers and sisters, America is standing on the threshold of total economic collapse. Recent studies shows by America's own white economists that the American dollar is now worth less than 40 cents. They say that between 1987 and 1989 that the American dollar will probably only be worth around 25 cents. America is certainly in trouble, not only with Iran, but the entire Persian Gulf over the oil issue. America has lost respect any more as she once was. Little Korea took the Pueblo, her ship, and blew the mine of the Pueblo and dared America to do anything about it. The Indians have marched on her at Mount Rushmore, talked about taking Alcatraz, now a little man, an old man with a beard that sits around and chants the Holy Quran all day long, Bismillah rahman rahim goes in and his people take over the American embassy and hold Americans hostage and then dare America to do anything about it. America's power is being broken. God has to break the power of America in order to get you. You will not leave your enemy. You will not separate from your oppressor. So since you are such a hard-headed, stiff-necked, and rebellious people, then the God goes after your enemy to break your enemy's power. And if your enemy's power, and when your enemy's power is broken, then you have no longer any other support system except your own and the God of the black man. That God power emanates from you. There's no spook, there's no spirit floating in the sky. You have the God power within you, but because you have amnesia and don't know who you are, you don't know what properties and faculties you have to work with and the power and force that could come from you. You need a checker, plain and simple, from the neck. I understand that time is up and maybe at this point we will only have time for one or two questions. I think the starting point was a 
little late. Maybe we could take one or two questions before we close out. Are there any questions? Yes, sir. Given all that has been said here today, what would you suggest in terms of programmatic approaches to move from this point on? Yeah. I think one thing that we did in the 60s, we will be forced not to do in the 80s, and that is each leader and each organization isolated itself. And because we isolated ourselves, we allowed the enemy the opportunity to isolate us. I think when the, as we move into the 80s, there must be collective leadership. There must be collective planning, collective programming, collective, collective action, and collective motion that will not allow the enemy to isolate any particular organization or movement as the COINTEL program or the FBI was successfully able to do and destroy and break the back of the black movement in the 70s. We must be hooked up like the organs and systems of the body that are connected by a very delicate nervous system. When you slap power eater, nation of Islam feels the pain and rises up. When you slap another segment, when you slap on NAACP's local leadership is talking strong. And I understand that they're catching a little flack in certain circles of the movement for breaking away to some degree. If you move on Corrida, you've moved on Farrakhan. If you move on Farrakhan, you've moved on Queen Mother Moore, you've moved on Stokely, you've moved. That is the kind of leadership we will be forced by the natural course of events to develop in the 80s. That kind of collective leadership, that is why it is a divine act that every black organization and black, all black leadership was destroyed in the 70s. So that we now all, raggedy, the boba, yakame, and ain't got nothing and starting out from scratch and we realize that even more now that we need each other. So right. when we were great and strong and proud and pompous, we said it's either my way or no way. Right. But now the Divinely, all of it has been destroyed. Yes. And we are now thinking of real integration. Right. The plan for the 80s will be real integration. Integration for the 80s will be black with black. Yes, An integration that we have never had. <laughs> never even had. when they taught us that the whole is equal to the sum of its parts. You've got to belong to in order to be a part of. In order to bring fractions to a whole in mathematics, you must find the least common denominator after the fractions have been reduced to their lowest term. You find the least common denominator, and then you bring those fractions to a whole. Minister Farrakhan, representative of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, said that for every physical law, there's a mental and a spiritual counterpart. If you bring fractions to a whole that way, factions among black people are also brought together the same way, and what is planned for us in the 80s will reduce us to our lowest term, which is just about where we are now. Yes, and right. we will find that the least common denominator for the 80s will be our common survival, common goal common objectives, common thinking, planning, and formulating, and that least common denominator, after having been reduced to our lowest terms, will force our factions, our estrangement, our division, to come to a whole. That will be what we will be forced into as the natural course of events for the 80s unfold before us. One more question? Are you right on this right now? 